right. Let's pray. Father, we love you, and uh, we just thank you for all that you do. And Lord, we come to you tonight with many, many requests and many, many prayers. And Father, we'll not go back and re-mention every name, but Lord, you know each and every situation. And so, Father, we pray that you would intervene in a divine way and that you would show yourself strong whether it be through the salvation of people from the passing of a loved one or whether it be from a testimony of other things or sickness that needs to be healed or whatever the situation is, Father, you know each and every need. And you also know each and every praise. And so, Father, we just thank you for intervening in our lives and we thank you for uh, always making sure that it's exactly as you would have it to be. And, Lord, we pray that you give us grace to understand those things and give us wisdom in the days ahead. And uh, may you be with our service tonight. Thank you for loving us, and thank you for sending your Son, for we ask it in his precious name. Amen. 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 Okay, let's all find a hymn. We'll turn to page number 82. What a lovely name. Actually, in the red folder. Yeah. This hymn. Yeah, red, <laughs> red folder. Mm hmm. to hear bringing hope and cheer it's a lovely name of Jesus evermore the same what a lovely name what a lovely name this name of Jesus Reaching higher far than the brightest star. Sweeter than the song they sing in heaven. Let the brook. What a lovely name. Through his name there's wondrous power power to redeem making sinners clean by his power he cleansed the leper opened blinded eyes caused the dead to rise what a lovely name this name of Jesus Reaching higher far than the brightest star. Sweeter than the songs they sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim what a lovely name. He'll return in clouds of glory. Saints of every grace shall behold his face. With him enter heaven's city, ever to acclaim. What a lovely name! What a lovely name! This name of Jesus. Reaching higher far than the brightest star. Sweeter than the songs they sing in heaven. Let the world proclaim what a lovely name. Okay, turn now to page number 74 in the folder. He included me. Amen. That's good.
I am so happy in Christ today that I go singing along my way. Yes, I'm so happy to know and say Jesus included me too. Jesus included me. Yes, he included me. When the Lord said whosoever, he included me. Jesus included me. Yes, he included me. included me. Gladly I read whosoever may come to the fountain of life today. But when I read it, I always say, Jesus included me too. Jesus included me. Yes, he included me. When the Lord said whosoever he included me, Jesus included me, yes, he included me, when the Lord said whosoever, he included me. Ever God's Spirit is saying, come, hear the bright saying, no longer roam. But I am sure while they're calling home, Jesus included me too. Jesus included me. Yes, he included me. When the Lord said whosoever, he included me. Jesus included me. Yes, he included me. When the Lord said, whosoever, he included me. Freely come drink, it's the song. For when he said, whosoever will, Jesus included me too. Jesus included me, yes, he included me when the Lord said whosoever he included me Jesus included me yes he included me when the Lord said whosoever he included me okay at this time Pastor Brother Tom's not here tonight, so I'll read this letter from the Grissoms. All right. Uh, this letter is from the Grissom family in Plymouth, England. He says, Dear Pastor and Praying Friends, My family and I would like to open this newsletter thanking all who prayed concerning the approval of our visa application, also called our indefinite leave to remain visa. Only the British could do that. Leave to remain. Isn't that kind of a contradiction? But previously, we presented before the brethren our request to, for prayer for the agent and supervisors at the home office as the government is tightening restrictions for entry into the United Kingdom. Because of your faithfulness in praying for our family, along with the help of our solicitor, our application was finally approved after our solicitor's fifth appeal. After the victory of his appeal, our solicitor, who is Indian descent, called and said, We have never dealt with missionaries before in our office. Since you and your friends began to pray for our team to work on your behalf, we have seen miracles performed in dealing with the home office that had never occurred before in our office. What a testimony for God and his saints praying for the furtherance of the gospel of Jesus Christ in England. We thank you for your letters and cards communicating your love and prayers concerning the approval of our indefinite leave to remain. We are now official residents of England. It has been said adversity is our friend. That is a tough statement, especially for Christians who are young in the Lord. 
During our trials of approval with the Home Office, we found the adversity our family faced caused our church and the believers to fervently go to the Lord in prayer. Our church plant rallied together when called upon by our solicitor to write a letter and submit some form of identification with a photo ID to the Home Office or immigration, explaining as follows, the importance of our church, the importance of my role as their pastor and his family, what would happen to their family if the church were to close. Our congregation each wrote a letter and submitted their picture identification. My friends, the British are very hesitant to give out any of their details, even more so when dealing with the government. What a miracle. To the credit of our lovely people, we saw God perform a mighty work in the lives as they came together to fight for not only their pastor and his family, but for the continuation of Lighthouse Baptist Church of Ro Roborough in, in Plymouth. Amen. Since our last newsletter, we have received several cards in celebrating Andrew's birthday and our 28th wedding anniversary. We thank you for cards and well wishes, even more so mentioning that you are praying for our people. Rob, Dominic's husband, uh, has attended our services five times in the last two months. The Lord has definitely worked in Rob's life as he has given up marijuana after he began this harmful addiction at the age of 14. Here's the amazing part. Rob has been clean from this drug for three months, but Rob is not saved. Lost man knew he needed to give up the marijuana. God's dealing with him, right? Yeah. Rob is not saved, but he is paying attention in the services, responding to questions, attending the church service as a family. Recently, his boss attempted suicide by overdosing on some pills. Family members of the gentleman, whose name is Dan, were able to find Dan before he had taken his last breath on earth. One week later, Rob and Dan were driving past the location of our church when Rob suggested to Dan, this is the church that our family attends. Dan, I believe my pastor can help you with your struggles. Thank you for your prayers for Rob, and please include his boss, Dan. Please continue to pray for Angelo and his girlfriend, Evie. The Lord has been dealing with Evie in our services. After the service this past Sunday, Evie and Angelo, Rob and Dominic's son, agreed to a Bible study on God's plan to heaven. After our evening service, we received notification from Angelo and Evie to schedule their Bible services on August 27th. And I know that's already passed. Pray for Margaret, the wife of one of the men in our church, uh, for salvation. She's suffering from multiple cirrhosis. Uh, pray for Charles, Vonda, and Frankie, Dominic's parents and brother for salvation. Pray for Rudy, a toddler suffering from autoimmune disease disorder. His parents are Jen and Robert, who once attended church many years ago. Uh, and then they have some future events listed, and I'll skip over those. But he says, we are proud grandparents. Our son Garrett and his wife Ezra are now proud parents of Alora Grace Yabut Grissom. Our family was fortunate to travel to the States for a short time to witness the birth of our granddaughter. Supporting our daughter-in-law as her mother was not able to travel and stay alongside Ezra. We're grateful for this time to bond with our son and his family before the Navy transfers Garrett and his family to Japan. In closing, thank you once again for our prayers and support for the Lord's work in Plymouth in the month of June. When we were facing the possibilities of leaving England, it was the prayers of God's people from our home church at Beth Haven, our supporting churches, and the saints at Lighthouse Baptist that encouraged us. Until our next newsletter, we will continue to pray for your church. We thank you for your monthly love, prayers, and support, Brother Grissom and family. And uh, then right now we have a ladies' quartet. That's new. I haven't heard them yet. Would you ladies come forward?
love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. What a sight just to see all the happy faces. Praising God in heavenly places. What a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. It can be just anywhere. Two or three are gathered there. That the Spirit of the Lord will be there too. There's no fellowship so sweet. There's no thrill that can compete with the thrill that I feel whenever God's children meet. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. What a sight just to see all the happy faces. Praising God in heavenly places. What a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. On that great reunion day, when our Lord says, come away, and the saints from every land stream through the gate. Joining loved ones round the throne, at last we'll all be gathered home. That will be the greatest thrill we've ever known. I love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. Love the thrill that I feel when I get together with God's wonderful people. What a sight just to see all the happy faces. Praising God in heavenly places, what a thrill that I feel when I get together with God's, God's, God's wonderful people. When they get rich and famous, remember you saw them here first. <laughs> I'm looking for a verse. I was going to have something to preach on before I got up here, but I didn't. Uh, it's amazing y'all put up with me, but I'm glad you do. I... Uh, um, yeah, well, Psalms 51. <coughs> Psalms 51. I, I understand that not everyone is like me, and boy, I'm thankful for that. But not as thankful as some of y'all are, amen? That... Uh, um, And I don't know about you, maybe you haven't, and if you haven't, that's a blessing and, and be thankful for it. But there have been times since I've been saved that I've messed up. I can see I'm the only one in here that's ever done that. Since I've been saved, there have been times that I've messed up. 
I'm not talking about anything immoral or anything illegal. Well, borderline. No, you know, anything illegal. Not anything immoral. But there's been times when I've messed up. There's been times when I've let road rage get the better part of me. Ever been there? There's been times when when other things have 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 happened, and um, you know, and, and there's been times I've messed up, and so. I've tried to condition condition my brain to think as Jesus thinks and as God thinks, and that's hard to do because I'm just a sinner saved by grace, amen? But I always go back to Psalms 51 because as we know, David messed up more than once, many times. And so I just want to give you about seven things tonight and then some results of what to do when you've messed up from Psalms 51. And uh, I know that I probably have done this before. I, well, I know I've done it before. I just don't know if I've done it here or not. But if you already have notes to it, then you're one step ahead. Amen. But in Psalms 51, they say it was written after David's sin with Bathsheba. And in case you don't know, David committed adultery with Bathsheba and then had her husband killed to try to cover it up. Now, I've not done anything quite like that, but I've messed up. And we have to remind ourselves that there's no big sin, little sin in the eyes of God. Sin, sin. Christ died for that little white light just like He did for the murderer. Okay? Because God desires truth in our inward parts, right? He wants truth in our inward parts. And, and so He desires that truth. And so when you mess up, what do you do? Let me give you some things. Let's read Psalms 51 first. David said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Uh, a lot of people believe that's the reason when, when uh, Samuel went to Jesse and asked him about his sons, that David wasn't brought forward with the rest of them. They believe that David might have been a stepchild of Jesse's. Okay, I'm going to blow your mind here this morning, or this evening. Okay, you go home and study it, but David wasn't brought forward, was he? David was out tending the sheep. He was the youngest. Why was the youngest out doing all the work instead of one of the older ones that could take care of things? Okay, it stands to reason. I don't know if it's true or not. You go home and study it. Come back and tell me what you think. Amen? My purpose in life is to try to get you to study your Bible. Now, I'm not going to twist Scripture in order to try to do that. And I'll give you the name of the commentator that I read that from if I need to. But it is a possibility. But here's the thing. David said himself, In sin did my mother conceive me. I don't know what that sin was, and God doesn't elaborate. But David knew. David knew that he started out life already one step down. Amen. There's people out there that don't start out on an even playing field like some. They're born into a world of poverty. They're born into a world of drug abuse. They're born into a world of alcoholism. They're born into a world of immorality. And they have to dig up out of that before they can ever even get a fair shot in life. And yet when they mess up, boy, it's all about them and their history, isn't it? Why don't you forget their history and just try to help them get over the hump they're facing? Okay? Okay. <clears throat> I don't, that, that's not even part of my outline. There's my outline. It's not very long, but that's not even part of it, but that's free. Verse 6, Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, amen, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. 
Purge me, purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear joy and gladness, that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sins, and blot out all mine iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit. Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. Deliver me from blood guiltiness, O God, thou God of my salvation, and my tongue shall sing aloud of thy righteousness. O Lord, open thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth thy praise. For thou desirest not sacrifice, else I would, would I give it. Thou delightest not in burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O God, thou wilt not despise. Do good in thy good pleasure unto Zion. Build thou the walls of Jerusalem. Then shalt thou be pleased with the sacrifices of righteousness, with burnt offering and whole burnt offering. Then shall they offer bullocks upon thy altar. Well, what do you do when you've messed up? What do you do when you've messed up? I'm trying to deal with some people. They're not in this church, okay? So don't, get, don't, don't, don't go throwing rocks, okay? Uh, but I'm trying to deal with some people to solve a, a problem that's going to wind up tearing a family apart if something doesn't happen. Okay? And one of the things they need to learn is this. And so I'm practicing on you before I call a meeting and sit down with them, okay? So if you throw rocks at me, I know I'm off key, all right? But anyway, number one, what do you do when you've messed up? Number one, make a confession of what you've done. You can't fix any problem in your life until you own it. Okay? you got to come clean before a holy God if you're ever going to fix anything. Okay? I know of families that have gone their separate ways and had issues. They, and, and, and one thing's led to another and to another and to another. And they've gone their separate ways. And now they go three, four, five years at a time without ever even speaking to each other. Because no one wants to own up to the fact that part of that was my fault. Okay? Yeah, no, no one problem is ever 100% somebody else's fault. Well, not never, but very seldom. Most of the time, we all have a part in that, right? Until you're willing to make right. I don't care if it's 95% their fault. Until you're willing to make that 5% that's your fault right, don't expect God to do anything for you. Okay? God wants us to own up to our problems. Make a confession of what you have done. In verses 3 and 4, David asked him to wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. There again, if you study and talk to, 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 and, and study different commentators, a lot of them will tell you that David probably had syphilis from his affair with Bathsheba. And that's why it says that his bones ran all the night. His flesh ran all the night. The bones that thou break, breakest in me. Because his bones began to crumble when his body began to deteriorate from a disease. He said, I acknowledge my, sin, my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. You see, there's always consequences to your sin. There's always consequences to your sin. You don't get by with it. You may think you do. You sweep it under the rug, you can hide it, you can think you can do this, you think you can do that. But sooner or later, your sin will find you out because the Bible guarantees it, right? Your sin will find you out. And so you have to make a confession of what you've done. The, the Lord desires truth in the inward parts and He wants us to be truthful and honest. In verse 6, Behold, thou desires truth in the inward parts and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Just be honest about it. Just be honest about it, whether it was intentional or unintentional. Just be honest about the fact that you messed up. <laughs> I've said for years, if I ever get a speeding ticket, it's going to be a humdinger, and all I can do is pay it and smile and go on, because I've gotten out of several of them. And every time, if I get stopped, 
which it hasn't happened in quite a while, but I'm not going to knock on wood. I'm not superstitious because it's bad luck to be superstitious. Did you know that? That's why I'm not superstitious. It's bad luck to be superstitious. The rest of you will get that after a while. But when, when I get stopped, I usually just, when I, I know it's me, and I just pull over and get my license, my insurance out, and I have them ready when he comes up. And they always say, Mr. Holt, what was your hurry? And I tell them, just point blank. I mean, I told you, I was coming on a ball game at Altus one night, and the guy said, uh, Mr. Holt, you seem to be in a hurry. What's your hurry? And I said, we just got our tails beat at a basketball game in Altus, and I was frustrated, and I just wasn't paying attention. And he laughed, and he said, I'll be right back. And he went to the car, and he came back, and I thought, this is going to be the one. All I can do is smile and pat. And he came back, and he said, I'm just going to give you a warning. I get a little frustrated when we get beat, too. <laughs> just be truthful. Amen. Just be truthful. I think I told you, I, I had, it was been a job, it was supposed to be a job in, in Stonewall, and I thought he said Connorwall, and I was 40 miles from where I was supposed to be, and the guy was waiting on me, and so I finally figured out where he was at, and I was traveling down the four lane and bypass around to Ada, right there at 99, where you get off and go to Fitztown, and I saw him, and when I saw him, I hit my brake, and he stopped me. And I said, Was I speeding? And he said, You don't know? And I said, I just know I was in a hurry. He said, I, th I think he told me he clocked me at 91 after the front of my pickup dropped. <laughs> he said, I don't know how fast you was going before that, but by the time I got my gun, the front of your truck had dropped, and I got you at 91. And so I got to tell him what had happened. And before it was all over with, I invited him to church. And he gave me a warning, and I went on about my business. If you just confess it, you know, I tell my grandkids all the time, if you mess up, just let me know, and we'll work through it. But I can't help you if I can't depend on you. Okay? If you're not going to be honest with yourself, I can't help you be honest with God. Amen. And so just make a confession of what you've done. David acknowledged that he had messed up. That was the first part of him, God restoring him to where he needed to be. He made a confession of what he had done. Number two, ask God to have mercy on you. Because you really don't deserve it, and neither do I. Ask God to have mercy on you. He said, Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. David knew there was no way he could back up and make right what he had done. I know a guy that used to be a missionary uh, to a foreign country, and he told me that he was raised in a different religion and at the age of about 14, 13 I guess about the age of 13 he figured out that there was safety in numbers and so he started running with a big group of people and the, the religion he was raised in was all about good works and good works and good works and he said I remember after we had done some things that night I remember sitting on the railroad tracks and thinking I can never do enough good to erase the bad we just did. And he said, it was like a, 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 a sledgehammer hit me in the head. And he said, I knew that I was headed down a bad road, but I didn't know how to get out of it. And about a year later, he wound up going to the penitentiary. When he got to the penitentiary, he got saved. And found out that that religion he'd been following about all them good works didn't have anything that was going to help him. But he got saved. And when he got out, he got into a church and he proved himself. And he went as a missionary to a foreign country. And, and they had a nickname for him. The first part of it was Killer. Uh, but uh, he was one great soul winner. And one great missionary in a foreign country. And so it's not because you mess up that you're done. Don't ever think it is. God's mercy will cover whatever you've done if you'll just confess it. If you'll just confess it. But if you're not going to confess it, God's not going to cover it. Okay? But you've got to ask Him to have mercy on you. Number three, ask Him to make you clean. Verse 2 and verse 7. 
Verse 2, he says, Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Verse 7, he says, Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Ask God to clean the slate and let you start over. In case you haven't figured out yet, I am really, really big on taking people where they are today and moving forward. Okay? You can't change the past and I can't either. Okay, there's some things that we can go back and apologize for. There's some things we can try to make right if we can. Uh, one of the steps in the AA program says make amends except when to do so would injure them or others. Okay, there's times when you can't change the past. You can't do anything about that. But what you can do is ask God to make you a clean slate and let you start from there. And I think that's the way that we are to take every individual that enters the door of this church. Let's take you where you are today and let's take a clean slate from here and move forward and trust what God's going to do. But you have to ask God to make you clean. He's not going to wipe that slate clean automatically. You have to ask Him. When you confess your sins and become a born-again, born blood-bought child of God, you, then you ask Him to forgive you of your sins. What does that do? That wipes that slate clean. He forgives and He forgets. Boy, don't you wish everybody else did. Amen. He forgives and he forgets and he wipes that slate clean and he says, let's start from here and go this way. And I think that's what we are to do to every individual that comes into this church. But if you're going to solve a problem, if you're going to straighten out somewhere where you've messed up, you're going to have to ask God to make you clean. And then the next thing is, number four, you're going to have to ask him to do a work in your heart. You see, it's a heart condition that caused whatever the problem was, right? A couple of you agree with me. It's a heart condition. The heart of the problem is a problem of the heart. Okay? David's problem started because he got lazy on God. And he stayed home instead of going to battle. You see, if he'd have been out there on the battlefield fighting, he would have never saw Bathsheba on her roof. The problem began with a problem of the heart. He got a little prideful, a little lifted up and said, you know, I think I'll just stay home today. I'll let them guys go fight and I'm just going to stay home and rest. A problem of the heart. Ask God to do a work in your heart. Verse 10, he says, Create in me a clean heart, O God. Renew a right spirit within me. Create in me a clean heart. Create in me a clean heart. As born again Baptist. We don't preach a whole lot and we don't even like people to preach a whole lot on repentance. We're saved, once saved, always saved. We're going to heaven. We know we're good. We don't need to repent of anything. Well, you probably need to repent of that thought. Amen? Because there's not a day goes by in your life that you don't commit some kind of a sin. You may not say it out loud, but you still commit it. Okay, because none of us are perfect. But we have to ask Him to create that clean heart. And He's not going to do that unless we work at it. Okay? When, when, when my heart gets somewhere it doesn't need to be, if I recognize that, I better do something about it real quick. Because things can go south in a hurry, can't they? You lose your temper and you say something that you would have never ever said, but it's too late, it's already out there. I used to have a sign in my office that said, uh, words once spoken are like eggs once broken. Can't put them back in the shell. I had another sign that said, happiness is your kids calling and not wanting money. But you know. <laughs> Ask God to do a work in your heart. Ask God to do a work in your heart. Number five, ask God to work on your attitude. Why is it? Back up. When I mess up, one of the first problems I have to get over is the pride of acknowledging that I messed up. And when that pride comes along, then it affects my attitude. Amen. And when it affects my attitude, 
that affects everything else. Told you before about our daughter Brooke. She got a habit of rolling the windows down in her pickup and telling the kids, throw that bad attitude out the window and we'll go. But I'm not riding down the road with you in that bad attitude. I said, well, you did well leave them down all the time. But, you know. <laughs> I asked her if she rolled her window down one day and that didn't go over real well. <laughs> Ask God to work on your attitude. You're the only one that can change your attitude. Well, I wouldn't have a bad attitude if they didn't treat me that way. No, it doesn't matter how they treat you. You can still have a good attitude. You can still have a good attitude. You're the only one that can control your attitude. Ask God to work on your attitude. Number six, ask God to return to you the joy of His salvation. And one of the things you need to really, really drill in on is He said, Restore unto me the joy of thy salvation. When most people quote that verse, they say, Restore unto me the joy of my salvation. It's not our salvation. It's God's salvation. He gives it to us, but it still belongs to Him. He's the one that took care of it. He's the one that provided for it. He's the one that did everything for it. Salvation is of the Lord, not of us. Okay? If He restored unto me the joy of my salvation, sometimes it goes like this. Amen? One day I'm up, one day I'm down. Sometimes I'm in the middle. Okay? But God's salvation is constant. And that's why there's joy in the salvation of the Lord. Okay? If you claim to have salvation but don't have any joy, I worry about you. Well, I'm just having a bad day. Well, so was he, but he went to Calvary anyway. Amen. Restore the joy of thy salvation. Because you ought to have joy in your life. He said, well, I might, preacher, if you wasn't such a Debbie Downer all the time. Hey, it's my job to be a Debbie Downer. You go back and read the book. Jesus talked about hell a lot more than he did heaven. He talked about money a lot, too, but I tried to refrain from that. Jars would never have anything in it if I started preaching on money. But I still got it in there, didn't I? <clears throat> Ask God to return to you the joy of his salvation. Number seven, ask God to give you the strength not to do it again. If you, if, if you succumb to that temptation once, more than likely you will succumb to it again. And the more you do, the easier it's going to get for you to do it. Okay? Okay? It's like when you were a child, I know some of you can't remember back that far, but when you were a child, I can't remember back that far. I blotted out most of my life. But when you were a child and you get caught in a little white lie, don't tell me you never told one, okay? But we'll check that when we get to heaven. But you get caught in a little white lie and mom or dad said, just tell me the truth and we'll, we'll straighten it out. But if you didn't, then it compounded, didn't it? And then it got worse. And then it got worse. And then it got worse. My dad always told me, if you get a whipping at school, when you get home, you're getting another one. He got tired of it. He just said, tell them to beat you extra. <laughs> you're wearing me out. If we don't make it right when we have the chance... And we try to just skim it over and act like it's no big deal. I promise you that monster is going to rear its ugly head again. I promise you it's going to defeat you the next time. I promise you, you play with fire long enough and you're going to get burnt. David understood that. And so ask God to give you the strength not to do it again. He says, uphold me, the last part of verse 12, uphold me with thy free spirit. No, it's God upholding us and not us standing on our own. And here's the results of that. Two things. We will win people to the Lord in verse 13. He says, Then will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto thee. If the main reason Jesus Christ came to earth was to save sinners, do you not think it's something we ought to be involved in? You say, well, that's what church is for. No, 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 no. Church is to strengthen each other. 
Soul winning ought to take place out there. Winning people to Christ ought to take place outside the church and then bring them in the church and teach them how to live a Christian life. Amen? But if we're not reaching out for them, very few just automatically show up. I mean, we have more here than we've had in most places I've ever been. Had a couple this morning showed up, and they told Miss Becky they found out about our church. He held up his phone. I don't know if he Googled it, if, if he was looking to see if I was wanted. I don't, I don't know. We're, saw my picture at the post office and was comparing. I don't know, but that's how they found out, and they came to church here this morning. Okay, that doesn't happen a lot, and it doesn't happen in a lot of other places, okay? We ought to be witnessing to people out there. We ought to be trying to win people to the Lord out there and then bring them into church in here. Amen. Okay, and as Brother Gary saying this morning, don't ever think that you're not doing any good because you don't ever really know the value of telling someone about Jesus, and we won't know until we get to heaven. Amen. But when we get right with God, will win people to the Lord. Maybe there's something standing in the way there that's causing you to not be able to win people to the Lord. Number two, we can praise Him the way we should. In verse 15, He says, O Lord, open Thou my lips, and my mouth shall show forth Thy praise. We are to praise the Lord. In everything we do, we are to praise the Lord. Well, praise the Lord. Uh, Miss Katie put on Facebook today that uh, her phone had dinged and said they were going to have egg-shaped, uh, egg, egg, not egg-shaped, but egg-sized hail. She said, I don't know if it's true or not, just thought I'd share. I thought, well, if it does, it does. I can't stop it. I can't stop it. But it's okay. I've got full coverage insurance. We'll just... Beat the vehicle up and go get it fixed or get another one. That's what pay insurance for, right? I mean, it's like God, I was talking to a guy that had a tornado come through an Ada one time, a hailstorm, and boy, I mean, it beat the socks off of everything. He said, I made one really bad mistake. I said, what was that? He said, the car that had full coverage I put in the garage because my wife didn't want her car beat up. So the car I drive to work all the time just had liability. It beat the snot out of it. He said, it beat the windows out of it, tore the seats up where the hail balls went through the windows. He said, and I have to pay for that to get fixed on my own. He said, next time I'm going to put the one with liability in the garage and leave the one with full coverage in the driveway. When we mess up, God wants us to get back to the place where we joyfully share the gospel and where we constantly praise Him. Amen. And so the question is, have you made things right since your last mess up? You thought I was going to say, have you messed up? And you'd already got your answer for that, hadn't you? Mm-hmm. Sometimes you got to go around behind that tree to get that squirrel. Amen. Have you asked God to make things right since the last mess up? Whoever that was including, whether it was family, whether it was friends, whether it was work, whether it was church, whatever it is, when you mess up and the Holy Spirit of God convicts you about it and you know you've messed up, you need to make it right. And I need to make it right. Okay? Because God wants us to not live in there. He wants us to live on the mountain so that we can enjoy life, so that we can praise Him, so that other people will see the goodness of God. Amen. Let's pray. Father, You know our hearts. We can try to hide it. We can try to disguise it, whatever it is. But Father, You know our hearts. And You know what we need in our lives. And Father, I pray that when I mess up, that you'll be quick to convict me and you'll help me to take this simple outline to heart and do as you've challenged us to do. Lord, I don't want to stop the flow of the Holy Spirit in my life, in the life of this church, or the life of other individuals. And so, Father, I'm asking you tonight, when I mess up, Reveal to me what I need to do and when I need to do it. And give me wisdom and give me direction. 
that we can go on praising God for what you do. We can go on sharing the gospel with other people for the life that they're missing out on. And Lord, we'll be forever grateful and forever thankful for all that you do in our lives. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen.